I've already given you a little bit of background on poetry, okay? Well, actually, not much in the way of background. I talked to you a little bit about what narrative poetry is all about, and I tried to get the idea across of how we should read poetry. Again, narrative poetry tells us a story, and when we read narrative poetry, we should read it by the punctuation, not line by line, but by the punctuation. Okay, now, where does poetry come from? You know, why did somebody sit down and, and start to, to create poems? Where does this whole thing start? Obviously, guys your age, I shouldn't say obviously, but guys your age generally don't have a great deal of feeling for poetry, generally. That's not to say none of you do, because some of you may, okay? And, and good for you if you do. But where did poetry all come from? Where does it start? How current is this? I will tell you this, that when I was a freshman in college, we were assigned research paper topics. And the research paper topic I was assigned was the origins of the poem Beowulf. Now... Half a dozen years ago, there was a movie, Beowulf, about the story of Beowulf. Um, and Beowulf was a hero who actually saved the, in a sense, the, the countryside around him. Um, there was a, a big, yeah, like beer hall or something that everybody went to at night. And this monster came up out of whatever body of water was nearby, the monster's name was Grendel, and Grendel, Grendel destroyed this beer hall and killed everybody in it. Okay, So Beowulf wants to make sure this doesn't happen again, and so he goes into the water and chases down Grendel, and, ob and, and uh, finally, apparently, and apparently kills him. Okay, and it's it's a long poem. Eventually, then he has to actually go and and kill Grendel's mother. Besides, so um, you know it's it's a a long poem. So my job was to discover where this poem came from, and in doing research, I found out that this poem was almost two thousand years old, and in fact, it came from. They found it in the cultures of different places. Okay, not just a single place. But, you know, one book said that it came from here and another book said it came from Scandinavia, uh, where, where one was saying, you know, it came from more like France and, and that area. So it was pretty interesting that, that uh, they weren't able to trace it down to a single place. But, of course, we're talking almost 2,000 years ago that this happened. So why? Why do we have poems? Well, we haven't had the level of literacy everybody or most everybody being able to read and write that hasn't been part of our world uh, for very long it's a rather current kind of thing in our world if you went back to 1850 probably uh which you know isn't all that long ago 170 years um and you know probably um some of you have had grandparents who lived to be 100 years old and during their lifetime they knew people or lived to be close to 100 and and they knew people who had lived to be 70 or 75 or whatever you know when they were little kids so so you know you you add those numbers together and you're talking about not all that many lifetimes before yours um that that reading and writing became a pretty common thing in our world Okay, so think of the songs that you remember well, okay? Most of the songs that you remember well have, have things that rhyme to them, you know? You remember the words because they go in, in rhyming kinds of things. And a lot of times, the songs that you listen to, in a certain sense, are narrative poems, okay? 
So, so you know, you're pretty familiar with narrative poems anyway. But going back to the beginning, before people could read and write, putting things into a certain rhyming kind of pattern made it easier for them to remember so that when somebody told them a story in a rhyming pattern, you know, they could make a point to memorize that rhyming kind of thing and then share it with somebody else. And when we get up to eh, the, the medieval ages, and that's a long period of time, uh, the medieval ages, um, there were traveling what were called minstrels. And these minstrels went from castle to castle and provided entertainment for the different rulers and their subjects who lived in the castle. These minstrels would memorize long stories, but they memorized them in, in rhyme because it makes it easier to remember things when you memorize. So you remember even the simplest little nursery rhymes that you learned as a kid, you know, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty, Humpty Dumpty together again. Okay, um, you know, rhyming pattern. Whenever everybody knows the words to that poem, we all remember because they're in rhyming patterns. Well, going back again well more than a thousand years, these traveling minstrels would memorize these stories and then they'd be able to, to recite them in place after place after place um, because they were in rhyming patterns. And so, you know, it was the same thing all the time. We took a trip on the Rhine River, okay? It seemed like every mile there was another castle on both sides of the river which means you had a lord in this castle here, and then a little further down, a lord in this castle, and a little further down, a lord in this castle, you know, one after another after another. So these minstrels could spend probably years going from castle to castle to castle and staying there, I don't know, you know, maybe four or five days a week, um, sharing different stories with what went on in, in the castles. And, and again, these stories really were kind of our, our basis of poetry because they would put them in situations where they could remember what was going on. So when you think of poetry in, in that sense, the whole existence of that genre, genre makes more sense to us, okay? There's, there's reason for the existence of that genre then. And of course, you know, as, as society developed then, these things went on and expanded and I don't know if any of you read the poem Ulysses, um, but, but you know, that's, that's a, a heck of a epic, an epic poem, uh, you know, a story of, of courage and bravery and, and, and heroism. Um, it's, it's a tremendous story, you know, um, and, and it's, it's written by Tennyson, but it's a story that had been recited for hundreds of years before Tennyson chose to actually put it into those those rhyming forms that you see, you know. And, you know, last week I recited uh, Casey at the Bat for you, okay. And, you know, the whole thing rhymes. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And so when Cooney died at first and Burroughs did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. So you see that's rhyming all the way through. And yeah, I memorized that. Okay, you know, um, but it's easy to memorize because it all rhymes. And the cremation of Sam McGee, which in fact is a longer poem than, than Casey at the Bat. You know, I memorized that and recited it for you last week also. And again, it's, it's you know, there are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The Lord, cold, cold, the northern lights have seen clear sights, but the clearest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge. I cremated Sam McGee. So it's rhyming, 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 rhyming. Okay, That's how all of that came about. Um, the, these, um, um, you know, what, what we refer to as, as poems were really almost like songs 
that these minstrels would sing as they traveled from castle to castle. And again, it made it easy for them to remember what was going on. Okay? So when you think of poetry in those terms, it makes it easier to understand how it gets started and, and why it still exists. Because, of course, we still have stories that we want to state and be remembered. Okay? And, and we'll go into lyric poem, poetry. And in lyric poetry, uh, which, you know, we aren't ready to go on to yet, but we will be, um, we want to get inside emotions. And so lyric poems dive into our emotions, but they frequently have that same kind of rhyming pattern. Okay? Um, and so it makes it easier for the poet to write something that will be remembered. Okay, so that's kind of where poetry comes from. And I think with that idea in mind, it just makes it easier for you to understand why poems exist. It's also important for you to understand that, and I said this the other day, words in poetry are like popcorn kernels. They explode for us. They carry so much meaning for us. So, you know, you could tell the story of Casey at the Bat, but it might take you many, many pages to do it in that poem. It is capsulized. In lyric poems, particularly, we find so much feeling, so much emotion capsulized in a few words. Okay, um, So, you know, um, poetry is like little kernels of thought that, that just explode in our mind. So just to have a little fun, I'll, I'll give you one more little poem here. Um, and the name of the poem this poem is Love, okay? Um, there's the wonderful love of a beautiful maid and the love of a staunch true man and the love of a baby that's unafraid, all of existence since time began. But the most wonderful love, the love of all loves, even greater than the love for mother, is the infinite, passionate, tenderest love of one dead drunk for another. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's a fun poem, you know, sure, it's, it's being silly. But you see all the thoughts that are contained in a very few words there, okay? Um, and that's what poetry does. So, you know, and that's why these minstrels would, would memorize things in, in a poetic form. Not only was it easier to memorize, but then they would be giving the, the listeners the opportunity to create so many thoughts of their own, okay? So that's what poetry's kind of all about, and we're going to be looking for you to tell us what your narrative poems are all about, okay?